the first question that I have for you is a three-part, well, a four-part question, and that is, what is patriotism? What is politics? What is government? And what is it that we, the American people, will have the greatest impact with concerning our future? Some of those you may need to repeat. <laughs> okay, what is patriotism? I'll start with the first okay. one. Okay. Patriotism is a love of country. And I think with that love of country comes a respect for the men and women who have protected this great experiment we call America for the last 200 plus years. It, it's, it's more than flying a flag uh, or wearing a lapel pin. Uh, it, it's, it's something that is deep rooted. Uh, I think it's a, it comes from your parents and it came from their parents. And it's, it's a love of wanting to be a free and liberated people, at least in this country. Um, a, a free people who respect one another, who, who would go above and beyond to protect America. That, to me, is patriotism. And the second of the four-part question was, what is politics? Third, what is government? But more importantly, which of those does the American people have the greatest impact with concerning our future? Well, politi politics is, is the unfortunate outcome of government. You know, everybody wants to be in the spotlight. And that's where we get these politicians. I mean, yes, don't get me wrong, we have wonderful politicians with pure hearts and good souls and great ideas. And those are the ones we want. But we also have politicians who seek self-fulfillment rather than to serve a greater cause. You know, if you look back in history, after the Revolutionary War, Washington returned to Mount Vernon to his farm that he loved, and the American people came knocking. At the, the, the birth of this great nation, they said, General Washington, we need you back. And his response was, Has I, have I not yet done enough for my country? And the answer was no. He was a reluctant servant of a cause. That's the kind of politician we want in government. Government is, is I, I believe it was Thomas Paine who said, once you put a fence around property, you need government to regulate it. <laughs> so, I mean, government is just the outcome of a safe and secure society. Uh, we can't protect ourselves. It's unreasonable to think that we could provide our own national security. We could build our own infrastructure. That's, that's government's real purpose. It's, it's actually quite simple and we've just convoluted it over the last 200 years. So how can we, the American people, have an impact on our future? And, and how? I mean, do you see an erosion of patriotism in our country? Well, we, you need to go back to the basics. And the basics is that the only thing that has changed history is the will of an individual or a very small group of people. If you go back to the Revolutionary War, we weren't oppressed in the way we define it in modern terms. America was a, a wealthy country, or the colony of America was a very wealthy country. We had food, we had abundant supplies, we had free trade with Europe, but we still felt oppressed because we felt like our rights were dictated by a king, a feeble king, rather than our creator. Uh, no human should give rights to another human being. And what rights are those? Well, they're outlined in the Constitution. The original writing was that we had the right uh, of life, liberty, and the pursuit of property. And property just sounded greedy. So our founding fathers changed it to happiness. Happiness meaning property in which we could harvest and, and call our own yeah. and prosper. And, uh, and it goes to that, what I grew up with, the American dream. You, you pull yourself up by your bootstraps, and you buy a home, and you have a family, and you retire. Um, that comes from the thought of the Founding Fathers. It's kind of like living happily ever after. In a, in a sense, 
Yeah, I mean, if you if you think back about Reagan's shining city upon a hill, uh, that's exactly what Reagan was talking about. Just a spot where where free men uh, with good hearts could prosper and, and allow their imaginations to go wild, which is what we've done in this country. Whoever thought the great American experiment would have worked? Speaking of Reagan and Washington, you're a history buff. And, I try. And <laughs> and. Can I call you an armchair political analyst? I mean, or, or are you officially a political analyst? <laughs> it all depends on who you talk to. If yelling at the TV counts, then I'm definitely an armchair okay. analyst. Okay. Who is your favorite president? Or better yet, if you were president for a day, what would you do? Well, my, my favorite president is, is Ronald Reagan. And, and I grew up in an era where... He was the first president I really remember. I remember jokes about Carter, mm -hmm. but I was too young to understand them. Um, but I remember this confident, strong man getting on TV. And not only did he talk about the greatness of America, but he talked about the greatness of the American people. It had nothing to do with the country to him almost. It, it's what we as a society, as a people, were willing to do to remain free. A and that just that instilled in me the patriotism I have today. Now, in addition to our political figures, either uh, nationally or locally, I understand that you have a lot of patriotism within your family. Yeah, yes. Besides just the national figures, you have what you call heroes in your own family. Oh, my, my brother's a hero. Uh, I have two brothers who served, uh, one in Somalia, one in the Desert Storm. My grandfather was at Anzio Beach when it got bombed in World War II. I had an uncle at Pearl Harbor when it got bombed. Um, and my father served during Korea. What constitutes a hero to you? Oh, a hero is, well, uh, and I'll use, uh, my brother's probably watching and going to yell at me for this <laughs> later. He, he called it going to work every day. Now, really? Oh, when he was in the military? When he was in the military, yeah. it was going to work, to mm -hmm. him, going to work every day. And I told him I couldn't disagree with him more. I mean, I go to work, you go to work. Mm -hmm. You're in a nice studio here That's with right. comfortable chairs. And he said, well, you know, most of my military career was like that. I said, yeah, until you got the call to spend 36 hours on an airplane to go to a land in which we would not recognize in Africa and get shot at. Mm -hmm. That's a hero. He put a cause, a cause of liberty, a cause of freedom, wanting his children, his grandchildren, to live in the same kind of land that he grew up in, above that of his own life. The, the things that he saw are things that you and I have nightmares about. Mm -hmm. That's a hero. 